you get a voice director, you get a movement director, you get the writer down the line. Um, you might be the technicians are going to be feeding in. Yeah. You've got a whole team mm -hmm. and you're in a, a mocap studio um, and you're getting all of these wonderful inputs. In my situation, I played a Cockney Goblin mm -hmm. in Baldur's Gate 3 as one of the characters. You know, mm -hmm. Is that authentically? No. <laughs> but but uh, do I love, did I love throwing everything into that character? Mm -hmm. Yes. I just remember looking around and seeing all these other kids go, I got confirmation because a friend of a friend came to see the show. I heard that he thought that I was the worst thing in the show. Don't don't be a perfectionist. Doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Perfection doesn't exist. So stop it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, just if it's okay with you, can you just come in every day and just try and make it a bit better? Is mm -hmm. that all right? And then he just walked off. Was there any preparation that was needed for to, like to play a role? <laughs> well, sassy, mm -hmm. arrogant, uh, grumpy, um, impatient. No, 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 no <laughs> crap. I just. My name is Andrei Rogozin and this is Beyond Real Talk, a podcast where I invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions. What are they actually doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? How can you start doing the same thing? And today's guest is an actor, voiceover actor, writer, producer, and acting coach. You might have seen his face in films and series such as Sherlock Holmes' A Game of Shadows, Ryan Lane, The Impact, FBI International, The Gold, A Spy Monk's Friends, and most importantly, The Good Neighbor, where we actually met, which actually was my very first acting job with, you know, with lines and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you might have heard his voice in such games as Vampire, The Masquerade, Blood Hunt, Formula One 2019. F1 2019, that's it. The most important, the biggest hit most recently, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 uh, as Roland, George Taylor. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Thank you very, very much for having me. Well, thank you for having me here. I oh, know, you've made that. Yeah, well, you made it. I feel like it's like those interviews I have in America. There's like 60 seconds. Woods. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe soon. Maybe <laughs> soon. <laughs> I am going to run for office. Soon. I want to start from the very beginning. Why <laughs> uh, and when you yeah. decided that you want to be an actor? And don't we hear that from every actor from time to time in their quiet moments? You know, mm. why? Even at the, at the top, I, 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 the few people that I know who sort of got to the very top, yeah. they say the same thing as you, you will have your days where you're like, why did I do this? Mm. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but, but for me, um, I think, uh, was at school as so mm -hmm. often it is. And I was probably, goodness, maybe, um, 11 mm -hmm. or 12. And we had a great teacher. He was the history teacher, but he was also, or the history and English teacher. And he was also the sort of, you know, the school play director. Um, mm -hmm. and he was brilliant, like I called Leslie Smith. And he, uh, he, he wrote his own play and it was based on the Pied Piper of, Hamlet, is that right? I think mm. it's called cool. the Pied Piper, the sort of the, the folk story. And um, uh, I wasn't the Pied Piper. Mm. I was the, the mayor. Mm. And um, the mayor was, uh, was, was in charge of kind of um, trying to take control over the Pied Piper. I can't really remember what it was mm. about, but I basically, all I can remember is there was a, there was a stump, mm -hmm. like a tree stump on the, on the stage. And I stood on top of it with a, with a sort of medieval hat mm. and a great big, you know, like, medieval outfit mm. and all the like, girls and boys from the school would stand around and I had to deliver this sort of speech and it was quite sort of, you know, um, extrovert and sort of, you know, out, out there. And I found my, found it very, uh, came very naturally to me. And I just remember looking around and seeing all these other kids go, look up <laughs> at like, what is that person doing? But for me, it was the most that natural thing in the world. <laughs> and they were just looking up like, why is he doing that? Anyway, mm. <laughs> but then had a really, a really, really sort of, um, really enjoyed that. Really did that whole thing. Found that as a found sort of passion there. Um, and then yeah, went on to do it at school. I definitely slightly had a wobble uh, before you know university because I didn't know whether I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go to drama school mm -hmm. or and throw my lot in at, at eighteen, nineteen, mm -hmm. or whether I wanted to maybe 
not have a backup, but just yeah. sort of do the safe option or do the, um, my parents are quite sort of adamant that, 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 that it would be a good idea to have a, um, but to be honest, I just wasn't a hundred percent sure about what I wanted to do. So, well, who is at that age, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, when I eventually did go to drama center, um, which sadly no longer exists, but um, it was a, a fantastic drama school and very well known at the time. And I, uh, I was 20, I graduated, graduated when I was 26, so I, so I was 24. Mm-hmm. And the people there who were 18, yeah, there were some drawbacks there, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there are there are definite benefits as well, I think, and, and and especially in terms of when you do hit the the professional scene of the market, mm-hmm. if you like, then there's a there is a difference between between being 26 to being to being younger. The the, the, the roles and obviously and the experience and, mm-hmm. and what you learn at that stage. But pros and cons to everything, of course. But I went to Edinburgh University eventually mm-hmm. because I sort of wasn't quite sure. And then by the end of that, uh, as was often the case with me. I'm a sort of only do things when I absolutely have to kind mm. of a person, <laughs> which, yeah. So 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 then I went to to drama school, the only drama school to 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 accept me, and I did it. You know, some people I know went to, you know, the the, the, the drama school they really wanted to go to, but it um, took maybe four years mm-hmm. of auditioning, reject, not yeah, rejection, and then they kept coming back. They kept coming back, and um, um. You know, year four was the one they got in, um, and 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 that was great for them. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think I was twenty three, twenty four, and I sort of thought it's now or never. And and yeah. thankfully, um, a great school said yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there on in, agent showcase got an agent, and mm-hmm. sort of you know off 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 we all went. How long? How long do you spend in drama school? So you there are a variety. You know, there are there are different. Uh, options the, the the maybe the most common or at least it was the most um the standard uh the sort of bachelors um of the accredited drama schools mm-hmm. um is is three years i think um but you get excellent courses for two years mm-hmm. and i know lots of people who've done that and have done b- brilliantly out of that mm-hmm. um no, not just in terms of representation but in terms of their um, experience and, mm. and what they got from it, and then you have one year courses, mm. and I'm, uh, so I think it's a it's sort of what you're where you're at, what you want, mm. um, and I think a lot of the, the the top schools offer lots of different courses, not just the three year. How many people from uh, the people who were together in drama school are working now, and how many just went to to I don't know some other path? Um, I think of a, 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 a pretty a decent segment in terms of because it was 2009 we graduated so it was a while ago um, and I'd say a good I'd say a good third mm. um, would, would be able to, to say yes we're you know we're working um, we continue to work so yeah I'd say a third um, which is not not bad going so uh, how crucial do you think um, going to drama school is for actors It's funny. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this just the other day, um, because of course I always think it's a little bit funny when actors say, "Oh, you know, I never stopped working." Mm -hmm. You know, I left drama school. I never stopped working. Mm -hmm. Or you know, I got my first job. I never stopped working. Really? I I I I I I really struggle to believe when actors say that. Do they mean that they've always had something lined up? Probably that's what they mean. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, is is that to answer your question. And there are actors out there who didn't train and there are actors out there who did train and, and both have had wonderful successes. Mm. I think it comes down to, again, what, what's right for you. And um, I think that I went to drama school partly to be able, to, uh, it seems to me a very uh, reliable, mm-hmm. if you can call anything in show business reliable. I mean, you can't. Uh, so, but... <laughs> A, a, a realistic way of getting an agent, mm-hmm. um, which you you know really need, um, and but at the same time I also went there because I had been doing a lot of student productions at Edinburgh. Obviously, you have the Edinburgh Fringe. I did that that one year, um, but I I was to be completely honest with you, I was getting worse and worse because I, 
because I was getting, luckily I was getting some great parts mm -hmm. and it was a small community. You've got the Bedlam Theatre, I think it's still, still the Bedlam Theatre, but you know, got a big acting community in Edinburgh mm -hmm. and um, small pond. And I was fortunate enough to, I think, consider myself you know a decent sized fish mm -hmm. and so you start thinking yeah I know, I know, I know what I'm doing I'm mm -hmm. pretty good at this mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah okay and suddenly I started to I mean all I can sort of say is I started to enjoy myself a very great deal mm -hmm. but there's enjoying yourself in a good way and then there's enjoying yourself in a slightly uh, it's arrogant a, in terms of the performances and stuff and working with other people on stage, I was becoming, I think, without being too harsh on myself, I was slowly becoming more and more um, self-interested, if I can mm -hmm. say that. I think I was slightly sort of acting on my own a little bit. I wasn't. I was becoming more and more isolated, I think, mm -hmm. from, from, from the other people, which is awful. Uh, and I knew it a little bit, but then I got confirmation because a friend of a friend came to see the show and he was training at, at Lambda. Mm. And I heard later down the line, someone, uh, my, I heard that he thought that I was the worst thing in the show. And, uh, mm -hmm. Not in a horrible way, but in, and he said, um, and I, I was a real, it was a real wake up call. Mm. And, um, and so I went to drama school cause I wanted to uh, obviously improve as an mm. actor um, and find techniques to, to stop doing what, what I was doing, which was becoming disconnected from the the other people, I think. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah, it's interesting. And then, so when you finished the school, how hard was it for you to find your first agent? Well, we had a showcase um, and well, you did really, really, really well. Um, lots of people, I think most people got some form of interest um, and I signed quite early on. And yeah, it, after three years at a good drama school, you hope to get a good uh, attend, you know, some industry professionals attending. And it mm -hmm. was, it was, I would say our year did well. Mm -hmm. um, we got some, a lot of people got some really, really good yeah. representation. So yeah, it was, and I started auditioning as lots of people did while you're still at the drama school. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, that was, it panned out quite well. And uh, you had the same agent for voice and uh, screen? No, um, often, I mean, some agencies have their own in-house uh, voice agencies, mm -hmm. but um, my first agent uh, didn't. Um, and I signed with a, a separate voice agency. And yeah, that I've stayed with the separate voice agency mm. throughout. So I've had the same voice agent ever since drama school, but, but um, I, I have five, had two different mm. vo um, acting agents. And uh, just, I'm just curious how, like, how did you get into the voice acting because it's it's not the same thing. Yeah. I I never did it. I auditioned a few times, never got any roles. Uh, but like it's it's a bit different thing, right? And how does one get into it when yeah. you kind of like when you train for stage for screen and then suddenly what happened? How did you get into voice? Yeah, well, with that, um, I I did a reel. It was one of those things where you know if you look if you're trying to think because I signed with my agency yeah a few years after drama school a few years after signing with my um signing with my theater my, my talent agent um so I think I got a reel a friend of mine had been represented by this new agent mm -hmm. and he as is often the case you know your your friends and, and your colleagues can often be really instrumental in mm -hmm. introducing you because there's nothing better than a, than a warm introduction mm -hmm. rather than a cold one. And yes, I got a reel. I think it was in a, one of the recording studios in, 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 in Soho. Uh, and research should be able to sort of throw up what's good there. Now mine is called Silk Sound. I'm not sure if they're still up and running. Work out what your voice is sort of, or what you, maybe might be good at. Um, there's a great deal of emphasis on authenticity, but uh, yes, obviously make sure that you've got some some lovely examples of your natural voice, your natural accent, your native whatever. Um, but in my situation, I played a Cockney goblin mm -hmm. in Baldur's Gate 3 as one of the characters, you know, Mm. Is that authentically no? But but do I love did I love throwing everything into that character? Mm. Yes. 
So I think definitely find what your voice, your authentic mm-hmm. voice, um, and yeah, a reel. And then I think much like with getting a talent agent, um, you're going to be sending that out, um, do, doing your research, mm-hmm. making sure you you find an agency that you really like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of kind of the same process. You need a reel. You always need a real show real yeah. voice real and then you just send the emails to the agencies who work with mainly just like voice acting right yeah i mean one thing in terms of advice i think that it's it's really good to not sort of come in too heavy so i think quite a good way of doing it is to say um i've got this real i'd love some advice mm-hmm. uh, and that would be really helpful mm-hmm. um, and then it's not it's not will you marry me mm-hmm. it's not will you will you yeah, yeah, will you yeah, represent yeah. me it's it's i'd love to make a contact with you i'd love to get some advice yeah. and maybe and it just gets the ball rolling in a slightly mm-hmm. um gentler way i think so and and it's true you know if you can get some great feedback on your reel from a really passionate or experienced or both agent then then mm-hmm. then great Mm, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I never thought about that. I, I kind of I was thinking about it for a long time, like to do a voice reel, but I mm. never kind of got into it. But right now, I'm at the at the stage where I'm really thinking about like I really need to do that like in the next few weeks because it's it's uh, it's good income if you get into it, right? It's definitely, pretty, pretty good money. Definitely. And uh, I know that I can't go for a lot of roles that, for example, you would be going for obviously <laughs> because of my accent but also because i'm uh, kind of my native language is russian even though i'm from latvia like mm-hmm. russian speaking ukrainian from latvia from born in the ussr it's a mess uh, but i'm pretty sure there are there are some there there is a niche for me as well there are like a lot of games where for example in like game uh development there's a lot of games where they need some you know people who can do natural natural Russian accent very easily because this is what yes. I do this is how I talk and every, every time when I see some some stars on TV who try to do this it's very funny <laughs> uh, waste waste not a moment get you know get on with it because um, I mean our mutual friends who we all worked on the the film mm-hmm. the good neighbor with uh, Andre what's his Andre, yeah. Andre what's his son? I forget he has 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 had some great success hasn't he mm-hmm. with and actually I did some um I did some ADR you know additional dialogue recording mm-hmm. for a series I, I I don't think I should mention which one because it's not out yet and lo and behold who was in it mm-hmm. um and there is so much uh demand not only for the historical mm-hmm. world war ii and all of that cold war mm-hmm. but goodness i mean i hate to say it but with current state of the you know the, mm-hmm. the, what's going on at the moment there i can't i can't imagine that there won't be more mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah i think so i think so. I, th- i think you know, uh, i know what kind of project you're talking about that we will not name right now on camera because we mm. kind of we actually auditioned for the same, same ah, role yeah well <laughs> but i mean I was doing the voice work for mm-hmm. that. I wasn't. I, I didn't audition or, or work on mm-hmm. the, the TV or film version. Um, yeah. Mm. All right. So um, then the question is: Can you explain the difference uh, in maybe some technical moments and in, in maybe some kind of difference of what kind of skills you you need to have? for voice acting in comparison to stage or screen. Well, let's let's say screen, because mm-hmm. from, from, from one perspective, uh, for, for me, I never done that. So for me, it's like, it's kind of the same, but you just, you know, no one films you, they just record you. But then there should be some, some different skills in voice acting. Is there anything that you could think of? Um, I mean, you're in a, often in a booth by yourself or if you're doing crowd work or you know with other other actors um i think often often again it's sort of like you need to turn up you might meet some people the engineer Mm -hmm. get them on side because they're going to be in charge you know they're going to look after you and control your levels you Mm -hmm. know um then there might be the client Mm -hmm. who is the person um whose projects uh, it is and Mm -hmm. they're kind of the the boss Um, but they've did that in terms of kind of holding your hand or or giving you direction or 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 being a creative um uh soundboard don't 
don't don't expect too much, you know. So again, much like with turning up on set, mm. TV or film, yes, you might get some rehearsal. Very much might not. Mm. Um, and so you're expected to turn up as you know you mm. well as you well know. Uh, we're, we're turning over, rolling, you know, action. Be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> and there's all these people. They know what they're doing. Mm. Um, so. We're not doing six weeks rehearsal at the National Theatre. Mm. We're doing uh, get in your trailer and then get ready. So I suppose long way of saying, how do you get to that that place of concentration and focus? Allow yourself to be able to direct yourself, mm. I suppose is what I'm trying to say, mm. or, or, or be self-sufficient. Mm. Mm. But in terms of technicalities, for example, like don't move away too much from from a microphone or something like that. It's kind of like it's small things that you will get. Yeah, you know. I mean, the engineer will make sure that you know. I mean, I think we're you know your your position. Um, uh, there's so there's lots of podcasts out there to um, to see people giving advice. Everyone's got different techniques in terms of what they do beforehand. Mm -hmm. I think with ca like with character work, with sort of your video games and all the rest of it, the, the, you really need to treat that much as you would a any other any other film or TV audition. Mm -hmm. You know, there used to be, I think, a sort of voice over voice. Mm -hmm. You know, a kind of slightly over the top, or, or whereas I think we've moved into um, a slightly. There's, I think there's more demand now for um, your performing as you would. Mm. in those in those mm. sort of straight roles you know those sort of um tv and film so everything roles. now like do, do you think that every everything now just in general in acting moves more into naturalism into more like you know for you to be yourself rather than <laughs> there there is a real thing for that and i think that's been going on for years um you know we don't want actors we want you you know mm -hmm. turn up do your job and that's not what we got in this racket for mm -hmm. necessarily is is that Um, you know, but 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 yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it just depends on 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 the, on the role on the on the project. Um, be prepared to um, know what your sort of USP is, mm -hmm. um, what what people recognize in you, what your sort of innate mm -hmm. qualities are. But but I think at the same time, especially with video games, um, animations, mm -hmm. and voice and stuff. But um, no, there's, there's still lots of character work. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. Like if you need to be a goblin, you need to be a goblin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, that's interesting. But um, so uh, how how much time passed since you first started acting after you went into voice acting as well? Uh, I mean, I was voice acting for a while. I didn't start working video games for a fair while. Um, the only sort of voice work I did before that was um, often sort of internal corporate stuff or things for pet food or mm. um, commercial real estate. So it wasn't very, mm. um, I mean, it's fantastic, but, but, but I didn't start doing the sort of video game work, which I think is more sort of um, like your theater, like your TV mm. and film. Uh, and yeah. mocap is amazing, you know, that really is mm. um, so much use of your imagination. And, and mm. like what we were saying before, you know, that sort of um, focus and, and technique and, and concentration. Um, so I think probably I'd say five, I'd say five years from starting work as an actor to sort of getting my first video game role, mm. I think probably. Mm. Um, but I, I started Get it, you know. Back then, my my agent was was really good, and she she got me some some nice, some really great, uh, as I said, corporate um, voiceovers quite early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is more like it's like almost like commercial. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, I mean, again, I think that the technique that I learned at drama school was quite useful for that because mm -hmm. if you're selling dog food, then you might want to be able to think about. Uh, what you want the audience to feel or think, you know, mm -hmm. and I think. You've, you've done quite a lot, like in, in film, like uh, what, what, what about theater though? How much experience do you have with theater? Yeah, I did, I got my first theater jobs of, oh, like two years or so after drama school, mm -hmm. um, which quite a long time, but, uh, but I waited um, 
And I got, I was very lucky and I worked with Casey Mitchell, mm-hmm. who's a brilliant um, director uh, at the National Theatre and then at the Hampstead Theatre, then again at the National Theatre. And she is just an, an amazing theatre maker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and her technique was quite similar to the one that I sort of practiced and learned uh, at drama school and found really useful. So we worked very well together like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I worked at the Hampstead again on a David Hare play. Um, so yeah, I've had a fair bit of experience with, with, with working on stage. And I do think that I, the last play I did was, was a, um, a year ago at the Arcola Theatre, not, not far from here. Um, and I do feel like it is, it's the coal face. It's sort of in front of a live audience. You know, there's no, there's no second take. Mm. Um, there's no, re- but, the, the, but there is another night though. Yeah, that's true. That is true. There is another night. There is, there is another night. And there's, that's really, I love that about theatres is that every night's different mm. and you get, um, it's just that incredible immediacy, isn't it? And that, mm. that relationship that you mm. have with the, the live audience is awesome. I think it's, I think it's, I, tr- I think it's tough to work as an actor and, and never do any theatre. I think if you can, it is, I think you really, the buzz you get mm-hmm. and the, the payoff and the, because it, it's the actor's medium, isn't it, really? Because you, you step on stage yeah. and you guys are in, are in charge. Whereas, you know, TV set, you are a cog in a, in a machine. And whether you end up uh, um, in the scene how you thought you would, whether that scene ends up in the film, as mm. we know only too well, mm. how it's going to look, mm. what lines get cut. Mm. And the problem, I don't know, for me, the problem is like with the, with theater, when you did a job and you kind of like, you kind of know if you did good or bad. Sometimes you might think, well, so like, because uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm the worst critic of myself. <laughs> I am. And sometimes I feel like I ah, it was very bad, but then like you kind of need to let yourself probably to listen to your colleagues sometimes, uh, especially to the ones that you know that wouldn't compliment you if they like, you know, if they wouldn't think that you actually did good. But in general, like in theater, like you did a job, you never, you, you never see yourself perform. With Scream though, like you have no idea how you did. Sometimes you think you did good, sometimes you think you did bad, but then you see the tape and you just hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and as you, you very kindly introduced that, I, did, I, I moved into doing a little bit of working coaching as a rather mm-hmm. lofty term. I did do, do some um, some part time teaching um, at a really wonderful drum school, and I do some one to one work and stuff like that. And I think that um, yeah, it's 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 not being too, yes, we can be hard on ourselves, but I think also um, it's knowing that you just sort of turn up, don't you, and you just try and make it try and improve all the time. Mm-hmm. It's always a rehe- it's always. Um, a rehearsal you know there is no end product really I mean mm. Katie Mitchell I mentioned earlier she would always say that every night is just another another rehearsal mm. um, I had a, another brilliant director and he sort of took me aside and while you're um, giving yourself a really hard time he could see that I was as well and um, he said look I, I noticed you know I, he said I used to be a perfectionist as well He said it doesn't work. Don't don't be a perfectionist. It doesn't exist. Perfection doesn't exist. So stop it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, just if it's okay with you, can you just come in every day and just try and make it a bit better? Is mm-hmm. that all right? And then he just walked off. <laughs> yeah. But I remember by the toaster who sat there, mm-hmm. stood there talking about this. He said, you just just stop it. Try yeah. and come in every day, make it a bit better. Is that all right? Great. See you later. Bye. Yeah. But it was actually really good advice because it kind of killed the perfectionist in me. Mm-hmm. Um, Because yeah. what's, you know, yes, it's good to be hardworking and, and determined mm. and, you know, really, really up for it, but yeah, because I, I think so for, for actors, especially sometimes it's hard to find this thin line between criticize, criticizing yourself for, in terms of doing better next night and just discovering your mistakes. And between like actually beating yourself up and 
that that's that's not beneficial for you at all. At some point, you just you just be, like you stop thinking about actually being in in the moment. You're thinking about like I need to be better. Oh, yesterday was so bad. I need to remember this line. I mm. forget. This, it's I think it's, it's so hard. Well, going back to when we first met, you know, on the Good Neighbor, you uh, you and Andre, both of you were you know worryingly good. You know, because <laughs> oh, Fier- 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 and I were 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 sort of. Um, front and center on that but you know you you guys and that so many of um of the other cast were so good mm. but and you would never know that you were being so hard on yourself mm. um because when you're when you're there you're there and you're putting your attention where it needs to be but um but yeah i think it can at worst i would almost say it's awful and actually you were going to i think you mentioned before this you were like is there an, is there a sort of thing a wonderful thing that you're using at the back there's a book, and I'll talk about it now mm-hmm. for me. There's a book by David Mamet called True and False. He said, um, he talks about uh, vanities of actors. You know, the, the people come backstage and they go, you were wonderful, Andre. You were so good tonight. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, don't, no, 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 I was terrible. I was terrible. I kind of sometimes do that, yeah. He sort of is quite tough on that kind of thing, that kind of um, beating yourself up mm. and you know you come back st- someone comes backstage after you've done a show and they go you were fantastic tonight and you go oh no it's terrible please don't no, 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 it's awful don't 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 look at me and he sort of says well no that's not that's 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 really rude actually and, mm. um, um and he also talks i think it's uh, that he talks about um nervousness being quite indulgent um um so therefore perfectionism could you put that in in there that sort of um, and and being too damning about yourself. There's an argument, and I'm interested in it, I'm not sure about it, but that anything which is extraneous to the job in hand, which is just, I guess, to sort of be there, know your lines, mm-hmm. um, know what you're doing, mm-hmm. and just working really genu- generously with the other actors or the other actor um, and the, you know, the people you're working with. Anything... Aside from that, I wonder whether that's, is that you, is that you? Um, and is it something which you could find a way to leave behind? Um, or is it part of your process, is it part of a way for you to, do you know what I mean? It's sort of like, um, it's, it's, it's looking at it in quite a business-like way, which I guess is what he's doing, which is like, don't be too distracted by, mm-hmm. by these things. Just, just focus on the job in hand and, 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 and and, and commit to it and, and get on with get on with that. I think just in general, it's. Um, I wouldn't say that that anything that happens, like if I'm doing a scene, uh, and if I'm not happy about the scene, I don't think it comes from anything that's outside of the scene mm-hmm. for me. Um, I think if, if if I don't like something that I did acting wise. Is just about the actual scene, but again, it's like it's uh, uh, with with uh, with film, for example. When I did some scenes that I wasn't happy about, mm. really wasn't. Uh, yeah, That's then tough. a couple of years later, I was rewatching the same scene, and I was like, actually, it was alright. <laughs> this is not so bad. So, it's, it's, so just, it's in the bits. It's just like a little bit from like I kind of expected from this scene something different because yeah. I just remember being in this scene and for me inside like like inside my head what I was doing meant something different from what I can see now on the screen but now when I see this on screen it still makes sense in like in this yeah. kind of in the context of yeah. what I was You're playing. You're the worst judge. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think you're right. I just think with self tapes now and all mm-hmm. the rest of it you have to look back you have to watch your own yeah. stuff so i think it's kind of the the you know the judy dench i never look at myself mm-hmm. I'm not sure that's an option anymore no well i mean if you're judy dench that's the <laughs> you probably have to self-tape too often <laughs> i don't think yeah i don't think she's so like oh i need to do a self-tape today who will i ask to read <laughs> no, no i don't think it's it's a problem that she needs to uh, be worried about so no i'm the best scenes that i remember in theater is the scenes that i don't remember yeah. i remember like so i did a scene or i did like a, or the whole whole show 
well, probably not the whole play because like you like you do become self-aware from time to time but when you are in the moment when you're like with your partner when you just like all your attention on your partner and you kind of have this back and forth like and you just you just forget about everything else like when you kind of you like it's not like you completely forget that you're on stage you never forget that you're on stage no but i think you're right i think that's, that's but, the, but the to highest. a degree but to a degree when you are just like you kind of like you don't remember like i actually don't remember what it was i just remember being in the moment yeah. you know that this probably was the best like yeah. it was the best way yeah like, it was the best scene even even if in some point like because every time every scene is kind of like in theater it gets a bit different uh, ideally if you're aware of yeah you, know, you don't want it to be too controlled and then like it might be maybe Derek could tell you like you know what like today you kind of went for like the, the maybe the, your objective went a little bit like or your intentions were like a bit different from what we spoke about but it was real because you don't remember it and you mm. were just you know, in a moment with, with the person. So I think it's, uh, I decided at some point, like I'll trust people around me. <laughs> yeah. And try, and you're, and, and you're, but I think you are, you put, hit the nail on the head in this, in sense of like, why do we do this? Mm. What's the point? I think, and I, I th the highest point you could get, the, the, the ultimate, the holy grail, I think is if you come off stage or you've come out of a take or you come an audition and you, 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 you you were completely in in that wherever mm -hmm. that was, and you you almost like where was I? What mm -hmm. what happened there? It's amazing, mm -hmm. and I think I th I, th I sort of think that that's the ultimate, mm -hmm. um, and that never goes away. That's 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 always yeah. always up for grabs if you can if you can you know yeah. find a way to get there. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like that's where you want to be. But at the same time, it's like you, you like even if you're performing on stage, you have to be prepared that you can't be like this every night probably no it's going to be different all the time but it and you don't know when it's going to come mm. i mean you can't control these mm. things you just have to get on with it mm. and, and 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 be present present and and and, and you know, generous and, and committed and all the rest of it and yeah but it's uh, you've you've completely the high watermark is the the, the best thing we can aim for money's lovely we, I'm sure that would be lovely. I'm sure we'd all love you to be not worry about money and mm -hmm. get lost money, and, you know. But that I think is is really the, the, the mm -hmm. that was definitely the moment at sec secondary school you know, before university. We had another great drama teacher and did another. Um, was very lucky to be in another great in Three Sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, Chekhov played Tushinin, and there was a moment on that on stage where I was acting um, with this brilliant actress and just completely forgot where we were mm -hmm. and came on stage and was like, and it was, I will never for, ever forget it. Mm -hmm. And that moment is, is what it, it's, call it a bug, call it a drug, call it, you know, whatever you want. We don't want to be too cultish about this whole thing. Yeah. And it's certainly not so therapy or anything, but it's amazing. Yeah. And it's, and again, without getting too kind of lofty, I was talking to a brilliant actor not so long ago who I really looked up to and uh, who I'd continued to look up to. And he was sort of, there is this ongoing debate whether or not um, as an art form, whether acting is an interpretive mm -hmm. uh, pursuit uh, or whether it is a creative um, art form. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that I think when, you're, when you've got a group of actors who are working really well together in a really, mm -hmm. excuse me, I think you can get to a point where a laugh which is happening as a as a response to someone or a, a smart if there's a moment of you're so in you're so connected to each other um and working off each other in a, in a way which is um that there, there can be there can be moments of of creativity of origin i mean it's not the words have been created for you but the working with each other i think there's a i i, I certainly think when i'm watching amazing work you see things you know they're fresh you know they're they're they're, they're happening right there mm -hmm. and then so yeah i sort of think um mm. interpretive maybe but creative yeah definitely i think in those situations i think i think it depends from project to project in yeah. general i think just you you're you 
even if you're a character actor, if you kind of creating a character, you're still you, right? Yeah. You can't yeah, be yeah. anyone else. Anything that comes from uh, like in, in the character that you are playing, any, everything comes still from you. You won't be able to play the same role as I play the same way as I do. And I would, yeah. I would never be able to recreate what you do. Yeah. So it's kind of, I think it's creative and interpretive, mm -hmm. but it also depends on the project and on the role, because if you're, let's say, I don't know, like a pizza guy <laughs> or bad Russian, you know, like the soldier, Russian soldier who comes in and you can't interpret it too much. They're like, they kind of like, it's a very small part and they probably want you to be this tiny, like this tiny tool in a huge mechanism that yeah. does this exact thing. Yeah. Otherwise, there is no point of, of like you can't create like you know the backstory when like yes. here's your pizza. Thank you. You want you go away like oh, well, my backstory is like my parents are dying and I'm it's it's it does like there is no yeah. creativity in that like no. it's just like you you're you're bad Russian come in like a bad Russian Ivan you threaten <laughs> someone you attack someone yeah, yeah. then you go away and that's it don't do so I think that's one of the options like where it's just very interpretive there is no creativity almost no creativity still like, there is some room yeah. probably but not so much but if it's, it's some a project I, it's such a private pursuit i mean actor ever there's so many different actors and uh, you know everyone works in their own way and I, I think it's it's very we're very independent you know uh, creatives in that sense um but i just think that they can say what they want mm. and the script can be what you know whatever but what you do or what you need to do to get to a place where you're really, you know, really invested mm. is, is kind of, is completely up, up, you know, up to, up to us, isn't it? And that's, I think that's quite, that's quite exciting because the work that you do put in, we, no one wants to see your work mm. and probably you're going to, well, you're going to drop it and get on, you know, you know, the director goes, no, don't do that, do this. Mm. You know, obviously you can't be, held back by, and, I, and the drama school I went to was very sort of idealistic and had mm. very high, but I think there's nothing wrong with, for us, it being important to us and us finding a way to, to really, really sort of um, get geared up, get really, really invested in it. Mm. So that when we do need to, you know, we're, we're shooting a scene or we're, we're mm. walking on for the first scene we're, that we're really, really sort of, um, it, you know, on it, mm. our engines running, running hot. But uh, but again, I think like for for beginner actors, or actors who don't get too much work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All the actors in the world really come like on. ninety percent probably. Oh. Uh, but the, the one thing to remember, like that, you will get probably to those juicy parts where you have you can have a lot of creativity down the line. That's very true. You yeah. asked your Andrew. You asked your. Uh, I think exactly knowing that when you're doing quite a, you know, doing a supporting role and you do have a job, it's probably quite expositional. But the inner life of your character is entirely, you know, mm. <laughs> again, sounds a bit, I went with a brilliant actor, um, older actor on a, on a, a, a we did a, a touring production of Death of a Salesman. He was tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And he did sort of say, you have to, it sounds ridiculous, but you have to protect your character. Now that sounds, mm. be so easy to laugh at that, but it's, you know, the respect that you have to give yourself mm -hmm. um, and, and demand is easy to mock, mm -hmm. but it's really amazing if you, if, if you, there, there's a brilliant, another book, which is obviously brilliant. Um, uh, what's her name? Uta Hagen. Mm -hmm. And she sort of took this sort of Stanislavski idea and, and brought it up, brought it up to date in the 20th century. And she was brilliant, but her book is called Respect for Acting. And I always go back to that. And a bit like you watching yourself mm. 10 years ago on another thing, oh, wow, maybe the scene wasn't that bad. Mm. It's that thing. Because it's showbiz, because it's acting, because it's, you know, there are famous people. You know, it's so easy to be sort of um, blasé or sort of a bit mm. flippant about. I do think that, that she has a real point there. Yeah. Rig is a bit, a bit, a bit um, lofty, but you know what I mean. Like, um, no, no, I do, I do understand. I do understand. Like, you need at some point, And I spoke about it uh, with my friend Matt uh, Matthew K, who 
was on podcast as well. And like there is at some point you need to understand that you are ready. You need to understand that you need to appreciate it, like the, all the work that you have done before that to be in this moment and not to compare yourself to anyone else, yeah. which is so hard, so hard. Yeah. I, I remember I was watching uh, just a couple of years ago, a year ago probably, I was re-watching this old film with Keanu Reeves, Hardball, I think. Oh, yeah, I haven't, about, I haven't like, seen it. When he trained this, like the, the, those kids uh, to play baseball. And I was watching, like, it's a very old film. And then I was watching it, and they're like, wait, this one of those kids who is like 12, 13 years old, it's Michael B. Jordan. Oh, my God. And I'm like, and you are decided to start acting after 30, where there are those guys who've been there since they were 12. Yeah. How do you want to compete with them? But that's the thing you don't. You don't want like it's not like I'm, I'm the same casting type as Michael B. Jordan, but I'm saying like there are so many actors who are like very good ones, who are who've been there in the industry for like since they were kids. But you need to realize you don't compete with them. You only, as they say, and it sounds very cheesy, I know, but you only compete with yourself. Yeah. Yesterday or like last year, it's hard. It's hard. Like how? Like do you? Have you, have you got used to, you know, letting it go? I think you, again, are absolutely right in the sense that um, the greatest sort of battle is in the back. It's working with yourself, isn't it? And mm. getting, I mean, I keep talking about teachers, and but that's so important. You know, one, the great teacher at drama school, he, he mentioned, you know, don't, don't, don't show me the actor who just got the big break at, you know, and then, and then you know, is show me the act, show me the actor after fifteen years, mm. show me the show me twenty years, you know, um, and I like that side of it. I like the side of it which is almost like you having to get to know yourself through, so that you can become better at the mm. um, better, at, you know, as an actor. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I think you're right. I think, and again, going back to um, nervousness or, 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 or going, oh, I was terrible, I was terrible in that. I, could, um, I think it's also quite good at avoiding that kind of thing as well because you just have to um, g- get on with it, focus on, 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 on the job and, um, mm. um, and have your own standards. So, so don't be too, oh, I was terrible or, or nervousness. I mean, I, nervousness I would often get is just because I think of so many different things. Yeah. You know, what will they be wanting? Have they seen that guy before? Oh, he sat comparing myself to other people, mm. worrying about, you know, the brain can't deal with it. Um, whereas to go back to, you know, having, you know, using a technique or whatever like that, knowing what you, if you can just find a way to just be focused on what you need to do mm-hmm. and then be honest with yourself about, you know, was I happy with what I did on, on my terms mm-hmm. in terms of what I expect? Great. Then the fact that you're not Michael Jordan <laughs> is irrelevant. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or the fact that you're starting in your 40s mm-hmm. or returning mm-hmm. to acting in your, you know, 30, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Because as you brilliantly say, that the, you're, you're pitted against no one but yourself in your own standards. Not pitted against, but mm. yeah, I think it's a really good way of staying sane mm. <laughs> in a healthy yeah. way. But I, I think I think we still like as actors. At least I, I'm. At least I know that I need that. I need sometimes some kind of like stimulus, like confirmation from people around me, like that, yes, you are doing good. Oh, yes, yeah. you need to like, or sometimes to look back at, the, at your previous, as I did, like yeah, I watched some self tapes from mm. like three years ago and, and I felt like they, they were good. Yeah. They were good. And that was like four years ago and I was watching, I'm watching them now and I'm like, oh my God, this is so bad. So you need like sometimes from time to time, you need to get this confirmation that you are progressing and that you are relevant. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, otherwise it's so easy to be drawn into, you know, just, just of course. desperation. And you're a dad of how many? Of a few, how many kids do you have? I imagine they need some confirmation from time to time. <laughs> well, um, yeah. yeah. So, and we're, you know, we're adults, but yeah, but yeah I mean, mm-hmm. pff, of course. Because it's not, we're not in an office. Mm-hmm. We don't see each other every day. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, Andrew, by the way, I thought mm-hmm. that. That, mm. that that tape you did with mm. the other was fantastic. Mm. Oh, cheers, Matt. Yeah. Oh, I feel so sad and oh man, me too. 
we don't get to have those water cooler moments, those yeah. sort of like, you're working on your own. So yeah, you need a, um, mm. you need, uh, you need the odds kind of pat on the back. I mean, for me, I'm very happy with my relationship with my agent and that is an important part of it. Mm. Whereas other people might want a different thing from their mm. agent. You know, some agents can be quite, you know, sort of quite tough and sort of, so yeah, I, t I, I know what you mean with mm. the confirmation thing. <laughs> but like that, that's the other thing that it comes for me too, is that I think And that's, what, what What do you think though? Like, do you think actors are, and I'm asking that all actors who I talked to on the podcast, do you think we are a bit narcissistic? I, now, narcissism is a funny, give me, what does, what do we mean exactly by narcissism? Well, I mean, <laughs> and again, like, that's, oh, that's clearly the thing. narcissistic, that's, but I don't even know what it is. That's the thing that, because for me, it's kind of like not narcissistic in a way that like self-love, loving, Uh, but more like in actress case, it's more like because we put ourselves ourselves into the spotlight. We <laughs> want. To I be, don't want to, but we I... want to be looked at. It's like mm -hmm. so, when anyone like anyone says like I, I'm not doing it for myself, I don't, I don't like. <laughs> but you like you chose this profession. You're not an accountant. You are an actor. You put yourself into the stand on stage yeah. and like yeah. Uh, so it's, can you might well that yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, do, do, like there is mm -hmm. I think we need we kind of lust for approval to a degree. It's a great question, obviously. And I'm sure that if I look back at this conversation in five years time, I might be so repulsed by my answer or appalled. Well, in five years, we'll do another one. We'll do yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but the, where I'm at at the moment, I think it's interesting. And I think as we keep saying, as we keep saying, there are just so many different ways and approaches and what works for me might not work for someone but i think things i've seen over the last 14 years of working professionally working professionally is is that some of for what i believe to be the most sort of brilliant actors or the most kind of inspiring actors are often introverts um mm -hmm. You need you need an audience to, to do it because you are bringing to life a story, right? Um, characters. Um, you have to have other actors, and you have to ha have um, a way of capturing or, or, or having a live audience to to to, you know, to be there w watching it. Um, but I don't necessarily think that has to be, um, you know, kind of self uh, regarding or sort of. Um, I think. It's just the nature of 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 the storytelling, isn't it? The storytelling has to be brought to life mm -hmm. um, with you know in that under those conditions. I think that actually you know uh, some of the most uh, compelling actors are often very have a lot of issues and mm -hmm. are not you know kind of look at me, look at me. Um, But maybe the, don't you think maybe maybe sometimes those issues like that's kind of the, the byproduct of those issues that they put themselves in the spotlight yeah. and maybe want some kind of well yeah I mean I did ask myself you know was I just a really unhappy kid who wanted you know um, v validation by mm. getting on stage so that I could cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and be accepted with a round of applause. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, um, I, I mean, I'm not like that anymore and I mm -hmm. still feel passionate about bringing characters to life. So I don't think it's, it, that, that may have been mm -hmm. something which sort of pushed, pushed mm -hmm. me into, into it mm -hmm. um, from, from, my, from within. But I don't know. Um, I was listening to Desert Island Discs earlier and there's Jamie Dornan um, and he was talking, his, his, his side of his opinion was that the yeah, actors always need a little bit of um, fear, mm. a little bit of, you can't ever be, you've got to be confident, mm. you have to have that self-belief. But there's also that you can't be, it's not a fait accompli. Mm. You know, one thing, the counter to, oh, it's very narcissistic, it's mm. very, you know, it, it's very, If it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah, you know, the yeah. courage required. Because yeah. you have to step out and enter into something and you don't know where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. 
re- if you're doing the job as, as I see it, mm-hmm. um, and therefore the courage involved with knowing that anything could happen and being open to that is, I think that's, I, I think that's amazing. When I see actors do that, I think it's incredible, mm. and it's and it's not narcissistic mm. and it's not um, self-regarding. Mm. I think it's the opposite. Mm. Um, so it's a, 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 a pianist uses the piano, you know, sex. I suppose the actor is using their, yeah. their vessel. The vessel. <laughs> but, That's our tool. Yeah, but I think the, the focus is very outward, right? Mm. Um, and in that, in, when we bear that in mind, then I think that the opposite is, is true in terms of not, you know, in terms of it mm. being about you know looking looking inwards mm. so in terms of your preference do you have preference the theater screen voice the rule i think i guess it's just you want it's terrible isn't it but it, it depends as you said earlier it depends on the on the on the on the project mm-hmm. it depends entirely on the project yeah. if it's acting then i think you don't expect I mean, your life's going to be thrown. You're going to have to drop everything. You have to, you know, you might not, be, you might lose money doing it mm-hmm. because it's not often that well paid. Um, but you're going to get a very, you know, it's like a gym. It's like a real workout, isn't it? Um, I think it's, I think it's a real proving ground. I think it's a real, like I said, the coal face. Mm-hmm. Um, um, TV, film, you know, going to be great for the show. Great for it probably better paid mm-hmm. um, and hopefully it's a it's a really exciting I mean, there's nothing beats wall, working and walking on set does it mm-hmm. it's an amazing thing um, video difficult question to answer because I think any opportunity is an mm-hmm. amazing one um, and hopefully the project's great and you're really mm-hmm. into it and obviously if the part is a one that you that really speaks to you mm-hmm. and you want to you want to um, bring to life Yeah. So it's it's very it's so fair. acting is acting. You just want to. It's do it. difficult, isn't it? Because I think uh, I, I've always struggled with these. The questions like, well, "What do you prefer to? Are you a theatre actor or TV?" Excuse what? I I don't get. You know, I'll do if it's something I'd love to do. It's mm. something I'd love to do, and it mm. doesn't really matter. It'll be different, and you have to make those decisions based on what you want out of you know whether you can. I mean, you know, you've got three kids. You know, it's sort of can you just drop everything and go off and do it at all probably not mm. um so yeah it's sort of it is based on it is a job mm. in that sense but um i think it would be very specific on um, case by case mm. all right how do you prepare for for a role so you, you're going to want to inter- interrogate the script so really work out you know what does what what are these what's going on where where is this um who are these people what do they want Um, what's just happened? Um, all of these sort of questions. Um, do you, if you can get get confident with the with the lines, you don't want to be thinking about like. Um, and then basics, kind of you know, an order of how much time you've got and priorities. I think just really knowing exactly what your character wants mm-hmm. um, from the other person or from the mm-hmm. scene and how they're going to get it. Um, and then hopefully you've got a really good reader. You know, you've got a really good. Uh, you're you're working with someone and they can. Um, You can really enjoy the the, the process of mm. auditioning. Mm-hmm. It's great, isn't it? If we can walk out of an audition and just be like, mm-hmm. I mean, who was it? Brian Cranston was it? You know, you do a performance, you do the you do the you do the job, then you walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard like <laughs> it's lovely. It's very great to hear these advice from like incredibly successful yeah. actors, and that you're like, well, okay, yeah, well, mm. <laughs> and then especially like and and again, like to going back to you know being criticizing ourselves like it's it's sometimes refreshing to hear like that yeah Tom Hanks sometimes thinks that he it wasn't good and like or he starts to work in some new project and people will realize now that he is not that good <laughs> and you're like oh you know if he thinks that then uh, it's it's right for me to think that as well <laughs> I completely agree I think that we've got to get out of this idea of there's a friend of mine he said oh I've never seen Meryl Streep do about performance mm-hmm. and I agree I was like oh my god She, he's right. And then I saw, you know, it's subjective, of course, but I saw something I thought the accent's not quite, and mm-hmm. I was like, phew, mm-hmm. she's, a, she's a human. Yeah. You know, oh, I, 
not everyone's perfect. You know, she's not perfect. Yeah. And I think. And, and, and again, sometimes we need to remember, like, there are, there are some actors who everyone knows they're not amazing, but people still love them. Yeah. So, you know, and there is no, no, no nothing bad about it. No, nothing judgmental because they do the job. They like, and it works and people love them and people love the films with them. And they help people to forget sometimes about their own problems and just relax, turn the brain off and just to, to enjoy the story, which yeah. I think is great. Um, do you have a casting tag? I remember my drama teacher at my head of acting at Drama Center, she said, darling, she was like, Urbane, that's your playing card. Urbane sort of, you know, very sort of metropolitan sort of, um, you know, works works his way around mm -hmm. the um, social scene of a, mm -hmm. of a, of a, of a, of a, you know, thriving urban metropolis society. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sort of, you know, a comic, you know, uses sort of a chat and sort of, you know, mm. um, but no, I think I've been, I get a lot of FBI agents mm. or Interpol, Nazis, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so often. It's kind of, you know, but yeah. So I guess, I mean, I sort of like, you know, I haven't done that many politicians, but quite sort of, you know, those sort of characters. Um, and then, but then, you know, I think we're going to come on to Bald's Gate in a minute, but there's that. then there's the, she, my agent, well, my voice agent was so funny. We did, we actually did a podcast to get with her and she was organizing me to speak with this brilliant actor who she said, kept on saying, he's so different to you. He's so different mm -hmm. to you. He's really cool. Mm. So different to you. He's really cool. He's very London. I was like, okay. He's really cool. He, he does cool roles. So the opposite of you. Opposite of he's you. He's cool. So different, um, so different to you. He plays, you know, he's really cool. He does like, he does like, you know, like cool, like skating, like, you know, gangs, like, you know, really cool, earthy, gritty, so different to you. And so, whereas she's like with you, you play sort of, you know, lords and mm -hmm. sort of wizard, so we ball to skate. Mm -hmm. I think he's a sassy, grumpy a wizard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> <Is he like>? <laughs> <laughs> Sassy, grumpy, wizard, urbane. All right. I don't know. I mean, they have... Mm. No, all right. All I don't, I don't, I, 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 I that's what she, that's what she said. Mm. I mean, I, you, I wanted to be Michael Fassbender. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I wanted to be Dana Lewis and Michael Fassbender. I wanted to be, I don't want to be sassy. I wanted well, to be. Know, why not? <laughs> I mean, if you do sassy well, then people will love you, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I know. Um, what was your up-to-date most challenging role? Well, I mean, the job we did, the, the did. film we did was, was a, 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 the, an the, alien who doesn't speak. The good speak. neighbor? Oh. The good, but, oh, by the way, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I told you that before, like during the screening, but I think you were great in it because oh. you had like, what, one word? You, or or if, it was scrapped. I don't year. know if I, and I, I got to say, I think it's hard to, it's hard, especially hard for your co-performers, co co-actors. Co like, mm -hmm. you know, Fiona was amazing because mm -hmm. she's doing a lot of her scenes with yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. No, but Again, you were great because like you, I remember, I, like I watched it, what, tw twice? I've been to two uh, oh, yeah. viewings. Uh, and I think like, because yeah, you, you don't speak at all. Yeah. But you were, you were very, very good. Like sometimes you were a bit oh. like, Oof, you yeah. know. But that, that I think it was yeah. hard. I think it was a really hard, um, but again, but also very good to go back to our original thing of like, you know, what's useful? How do you prepare? I did, I, I knew, I tried to make sure I knew, you know, what I wanted in, in mm -hmm. that. And, and I, with a character that doesn't speak, mm -hmm. you really, it's really helpful to know exactly what you're going for because then mm -hmm. Uh, all of your other faculties are going to be, you know, mm. being used because you're going to be like an animal. You're yeah. just going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at some scenes, you were very animalistic, and that, like, there, I think it's it's I kind of. It, uh, but again, like, it's some some scenes where when you kind of like were a bit like, Ugh. yeah. But some scenes where you like you had like this very warm kind of you know energy about you. I sometimes say that when I'm working with some. Um, fellow actors and some students, whatever I say, you know, beware the theatre company which decides to use live animals on stage mm. um, because 
uh, the audience is probably going to be more interested in the cat mm -hmm. than than the actors mm -hmm. because animals don't act they mm. just uh they're just being themselves <laughs> yeah and we love that you yeah. know the audience we love that but um, i always say imagine if we could get the same level of focus mm -hmm. um and that you know there's no fat on that bone it's it's mm. um yeah yeah all right <laughs> uh do you do you have any kind of i don't know the biggest failure and um, failure acting, yeah failure and like <sighs> yeah. and, and anything that you kind of took from it Learn yeah, I mean, I think failure is the most, uh, like, obviously, you know, we've heard this hundred times, but they're probably more important than your successes, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't grow from, I mean, you do grow from success in the sense that more people, like, take you seriously or whatever, but it, as, as, as ourselves, um, the, the setbacks is what probably makes you grow the most, mm -hmm. isn't it? And, um, uh, I, lo I mean, learning with film that you know just when i thought i got the big break that you end up on the cutting room floor you know a little bit of humble a little bit of reality mm. a little bit of like um perspective i mean but sometimes well i hope so. <laughs> sometimes if you ended up you know if you seem you ended up cut out from the film or series uh, it's not necessarily your own failure because maybe no, you did like maybe you did a great job and just you, didn't sit right. You are know. absolutely right. That's not failure. You're absolutely right. Um, I think it's just experience that is, isn't it? Um, failure. Well, again, it's it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, uh, I suppose failure would come down to you know, not being prepared, not knowing life. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know because a lot of the things you're right that I consider to be setbacks are often maybe for various other reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so great failures. Oh, I don't know. I've seen mm -hmm. about that because now then I, I've got lots of things that I like. My big I got recast from a, a play that I loved, and then they decided to go mm -hmm. when it went into the West End. They decided to. The, the script changed and they decided to change, you know, a few of, a few of um, us out. Mm -hmm. And I took that really, that was very painful because I, I felt like it was, you know, a part, which was a great, great, a great uh, part. Um, and um, it went a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, and it was hard not to take that, that personally. But um, like you're saying, it wasn't so much to do with, uh, you know, things change and, and what they want to do or what it needs to be might not have so much to do with you as to do with some other considerations, mm -hmm. but um, failure. Well, if there is nothing that it's you rejection. can rejection. You know, you, you, it's with the acting, it is, it's, it's the perseverance, isn't it? It's the, 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 the and they are, you know, that they're, the rejections, mm -hmm. but you get called back five years later by someone. Mm. So then it's not a rejection, is it? I mean, it's, it's a, so survival, um, perseverance, mm. these are the, mm. the re this is the real, the real deal. How long did it take you to get used to rejection? <laughs> or are you still <laughs> getting uh, used to it? I mean, now I, 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 you've got to care. The difficulty is caring, isn't it? And letting go. Mm. Yes. I suppose as long as, a bit like what you were saying, as long as you've got, the, you feel like you've done a good job. Mm. The rest is indulgence, isn't it? Mm. Oh no, oh, haven't they? It's just a pity, self-pity. Mm. It's not helpful, it mm. might feel good. Anything that feels good is probably, you know, so I think you've done the job, you've done all the work, what, what more is there to be done? Mm. But yeah, we did that again. I definitely took me a long time to move from the rejection is personal and hurts mm. to part of the part of the job. Mm. Nine times out of ten, yeah. six times out of ten, nine times out, whatever it is, mm. is it a ten percent success rate? Is it better? Than, whatever, mm. different for different people at different times, but. Um, getting a little bit more business-like about it and a bit more kind of less emotional about it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. How were the last few years for you? Like, were you busy in general? The or? last few years? Yeah. Um, yeah. I 
the theatre that I haven't worked so much in theatre, which I do miss, um, more much more TV, um, and the the video game stuff is obviously picked up a lot. Um, mm. um, so yeah, the TV, TV, film, um, and voiceover and video games. But uh, but uh, yeah, theatre, right? theatre, I haven't done for a while. Let's get to the to the Baldur's Gate because I'm sure you have a huge fan base now <laughs> with Baldur's <Fans>. Gate <laughs> fellow fellow lovers of the the, the uh, Sword Coast. And we, we definitely need to talk about it as well. Uh, I honestly will say I haven't played it yet. I will, but I just can't now because I'm doing this. And let's be honest, playing Baldur's Gate, it would take me months and months and probably months because I remember last big biggest games that I played were Witcher 3 and mm. Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, that's great. I spent so much time on them and I can't I can't afford it right now, but I will definitely play it. So no spoilers as well, which is as a rule. Uh, but let's talk about it because that's definitely something that I will play at some point when I have some time and I think a lot of people want to know some things. How long were you working on it? Four years. Four years. I mean, not every day. No, no, no. <laughs> except, like, still for four years. But for four years, yeah. yeah. We were we were working on it for on and off for four years. I mean, that was the pandemic and stuff, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we were, I was working on it for four years uh, to varying degrees. Sometimes it would be quite often, sometimes it would be, mm-hmm. yeah. but the, the, the writer, the eventually one of the, I, th- I was told it was lead writer. I think there were a few lead writers um, came on board with my character about two years in. So mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was a, you know, one felt that they were, um, you know, reacting to, because the game was an early access as well, so you mm-hmm. could play it. It was a you know it was a, you you could. I mm-hmm. mean, um, then they were working, they were working with uh, players playing it in early access and getting feedback and patching mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right, so four years, yeah, it's, it's quite a long, quite a long time. And mm-hmm. uh, during the, those four years, you couldn't talk about I mean, it. But also, sure, didn't, but also, you didn't know. Again, no one, you never know really mm-hmm. whether the. I mean, I don't think any of us thought that. I mean, I'm not one of the sort of uh, origin characters, the main cast. Mm-hmm. I'm, um, I had, I had f- very, no expectations about A, the game or B, that the, the, the people would like Roland mm-hmm. um, in the way that they, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, no one, I, I don't think, and the other, the other video games that I've worked on, you know, mm-hmm. you don't know what's gonna sort of grab people's mm-hmm. attention. Yeah, like, was there any preparation that was needed for to, like to play Roland? <laughs> well, sassy, mm-hmm. arrogant, uh, grumpy, um, impatient. No, 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 no <laughs> crap. I just no. To be fair, it, you know, I didn't play just him. Played a few other roles, and this was the main role I played. Mm-hmm. And 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 when we would work, sometimes you'd be, you know, maybe a few weeks bef- bef- between the last time you worked and working now, and you know the we have stuff to look at to remind me, but he was quite in my bone, you know, you play a character that long enough, you're lucky, you know, when we get lucky to play those characters for a long period of time, they do somehow sort of, you know, you get very, very familiar with them. And, and, mm-hmm. and whereas some of the other characters, I, I really did sort of need to get those reminders of, mm-hmm. you know, what do they say? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas with him, mm-hmm. it felt quite, uh, you know, there was a certain element of familiarity and ownership over, mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. that. All right, uh, but how how far away he is from you? Like, <laughs> no, I mean, like, he's, like, yeah, he's more he's more ambitious. I think mm-hmm. he's very I mean, he's a huge amount of ambitious. He's got a greater, or maybe I do, but he's more ob- open about how highly he regards himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he's less afraid of of, of confronting. Mm-hmm. He's much more confrontational than I am, mm-hmm. um, and he has no time for. He's outspoken. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's he's he. I think that's the big difference between me and him is, is that mm-hmm. he's very like um, he'll go he'll he'll go out and say it. He'll mm-hmm. be you know, he's very. And in terms of voice, how different is his voice from your regular voice, or is it kind of? Yeah, it's a little bit more. Um, it's not so laid back. I think it's a little bit more. He he is. A slightly more authority, authoritative figure. He's got. He's an authority figure. He's got. He's got the sort of leader complex. Or have, have you had to spend some time to find his voice? I auditioned for it. 
We did find it definitely in the first few sessions, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, there are biographies and the sort of that. Remember, with, with, you know, with some of these things, you get, a, you get a voice director, you get a movement director, you get the writer down the line. Um, you might, the technicians are going to be feeding in. The, you've got a whole team mm -hmm. and you're in a, a mocap studio um, and you're getting all of these wonderful inputs. So you're really, you know, you're, you're, you're getting so much help and sort of uh, nudges and sort mm. of things. But without getting into details, like was it, it wasn't just uh, voice recording, it was also like... It was, uh, was mocap, but it, was mo it, was motion, it wasn't facial recognition. So mm -hmm. the, the most I've ever done was for F1 2019, where it was my face mm -hmm. with the dots, all of my body movements mm -hmm. and my voice was a whole, a whole caboodle. Mm -hmm. um, but this was the sort of the next one down it was just um uh, body movements and voice so the, mm. the, the face was 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 not mm. captured the facial you know expression yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. what was the most difficult thing doing this <laughs> one in general well with roland so no more without any spoilers but you sometimes you have to there were there were moments where i played characters who were dead um so you have to you brought back to life mm. <laughs> so that's quite mm. nuts to be like <laughs> Okay, so, all right, Andre, we're going we're to go again. You're dead. Mm -hmm. um, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you should say, I'm like, cool. You know, definitely don't have a lot of <laughs> experience with that. <laughs> How much of the of this overall kind of storyline was given to you when you were working or you were kind of every time when you're coming in, like, okay, there's another bit you need to do. Yeah, I know. I mean, you... You you get you slowly get to piece together what's going on. And what I love about it is often you know with these with these things, the worlds, the actors often don't know anything about them. You know, mm -hmm. you know you don't have a, 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 an idea of how to approach it. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that was quite helpful. We didn't. I didn't know it was Baldur's Gate three. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was, you know, Faerun. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of the stuff. I just knew that the code name for the game who this character was and then gradually you start to learn more and more as you're mm. working on it from the scripts and also just through yeah interesting and that, that's that leads me to, to the next question which is i always, always wondered that like when i was playing uh other games with let's say different endings and you know not linear uh, gameplay how is the process of recording lines happens when you have different whole like huge branches of dialogue? How do you do that? Like, do, what was the process there? I mean, you just have lots of lines. <laughs> Lucky you, you got lots of lines. But um, I think that's the job of, I mean, there was a brilliant, I worked a lot with lots of brilliant um, directors, um, but there were some great directors on this. Um, you, you just, I suppose, have all the different dialogue options, um, and I think it's the, the 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 job is knowing what's come before. I mean, you, um, I, it's knowing the branches and what's involved, what you're responding to, and I think you know, the, having a great director is super mm -hmm. helpful. Knowing you know, knowing as much as you can, but mm -hmm. yeah, you just you 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 get through all of it. Um, and then if you're unsure, then you sort of go, just, just so I'm aware, what am I, res am I responding to a dragon here mm -hmm. or is it a, is it a, a milkmaid? Which one was it? Again? Oh, you go. Great. Thank you. Glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, do you have any favorite, uh, quote from, from Baldur's Gate from Roland? Yeah. I think the sort of, I love, um, the writing when it's, um, Adoring applause, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I, I, I can see where he's coming from. All right. <laughs> nice. um, how, so when, when the game came out, how quick you realized that there is a whole like, uh, fandom and a fan base even for you, how, how quickly did, like kind of how quickly people found you and like oh this is wrong yeah i think to like uh, I, I again you have no idea it's it, no one had any idea um i, I mean i'm a gamer myself so i i, I loved i love seeing 
mm-hmm. that will happen. I continue to, I love, the community is amazing, the sort mm-hmm. of Baltic community. The people who are involved with the, with, with, with bringing it to life mm-hmm. are the luckiest because mm-hmm. um, we're afforded this sort of, you know, extra special um, um, uh, interest. Uh, but honestly, uh, the, the, the level of sort of love and sort of positivity and joy is so fun and I actually started streaming because um, mm-hmm. I've never played it before when I played the game. Mm-hmm. So I started doing it. And because of all the people, it's 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 super, super fun mm. and super enjoyable because I, 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 it's a single player game, but doing it with all of the the the, follow, you know, the people who are there on the stream, mm-hmm. <laughs> helping me sometimes. No, 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 yeah, I've seen your first stream. I've seen your first <laughs> stream. I think it's pretty good. But then again, uh, like I, I thought of, Maybe I'll watch more, but then I decided, you know what? I'm going to play this game, so yeah. I don't, I don't want spoilers. I think I, yeah, I wouldn't want spoilers, and I think I'd sort of almost, I, I make sure I don't sort of work anything out before I do it. And also, um, I think if I played the game before, then I might want to watch someone mm. else play it more because I'd sort of yeah, be yeah, interested yeah. to know how they're going to react in those moments. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, so is there anything that you want to say to Baldur's Gate community and your kind of fans? Um, don't be greedy. No, I am. Um, no, just uh, that. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything to say to the Baldur's Gate community. Let me think about it and say. Um, no, I don't, be, the only thing I have to say to the Baltic community is thank you so mm-hmm. much for welcoming me into the world um, and being so supportive and generous and kind and funny and in, in imaginative and brilliant. And yeah, it's just been a total joy from beginning to end. Nice. Is there anything Roland wants to uh, tell to them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the applause is what he's after. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we go to the Blitz round, which is very quick, uh, what's next for you? What's next for you? What, like anything in the pipeline? Um, I'm working on um, a comedy at the moment, which um, I can't say much about, which is it's actually still um, quite early, early in development. Um, uh, so that's the, that's my my main thing, mm-hmm. um, but um, yeah. As right. I say, the one thing I'd love I'd, I'd, to tread the boards once more, maybe mm-hmm. some theatre. That would mm-hmm. be fun. Uh, how people who want to work with you can can find you? I think I've got a link tree, so it's got all my contacts. All right, all right. I'll, I'll add the I'll add the. And, and Thank you. Right here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final blitz round. Very quick questions, quick answers, and we are done. Uh, ready? Texting or talking? Texting. Cats or dogs? Cats. Uh, your one guilty pleasure? Peanut butter. Mm-hmm. What makes you laugh? friends being rude about other friends is terrible. I know it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what makes you angry? Um, uh, what makes me angry? Myself. I, when I get angry at myself for something, that's when I get really angry. Oh, yes. I know. I know. I, I swear at myself very, very badly. <laughs> when, I'm angry, when I'm annoyed at myself. <laughs> All right. Do you have any nicknames? Family nickname is Tinker. Tinker, my son is Taylor. Tinker Taylor. All right. Tinker Taylor. <laughs> what dish do you cook best? What dish? Um, I'd say uh, I do a, a good risotto. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Your favorite character in any fictional story, book, screen, video game, play? Uh, Sheriff of Nottingham in Robin and Prince Thieves, Alan Rickman. The reason I got in, the real reason, we could have wrapped this whole thing up yeah. in, in two seconds, Alan Rickman and Robin and Prince Thieves. Oh, Alan Rickman, how, how amazing was he? Huh? He was so... Oh. All right. Star Wars or The Lord of the Rings? Star Wars. Okay. Uh, well, Lord of the Rings, book, mm-hmm. Star Wars as well. 
So, so there, there wasn't there's, no, there's no book of Star Wars, is there? <laughs> I, 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 the book of Lord of the Rings over Star Wars. Yeah. But if we're, if we're talking about film, then... Yeah, one day, one day, someone will say Lord of the Rings. I promise you, one day. No one. No one. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Alien or aliens? Alien. Okay. Do you have any unknown, unexpected talents? Well, I'm trying to learn how to dive, and I, I think it's gonna. Yeah. Ha- I think dancing. Dancing. You've never been. I'm slowly, in my old age, beginning to learn, beginning to become more confident with dancing, and feedback is pretty hot. Nice, nice. Feedback. Because I, I'm not allowed to dance. Uh, I'm not allowed because <laughs> they said on the border when I moved to UK, they said like, if you try to dance, we're departing back to your country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember how I've seen you throw any shapes, Andre. The sort of rap party or something. I bet. Uh, no, I don't yeah. think so. I think. I'm going to say because my kids say I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like. No, they they they're they're stop being ashamed of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When was the last time you cried? Mm, I cried earlier earlier this year. Yeah, there's um, I'm just about a with a with a about a friend something. Sad that it happened, and yeah, uh, that was mm. so yeah, all right, a couple, few weeks ago, all right. Well, and that's almost it. The last thing that I wanted from you is do you have uh, one cool thing? Going back to what I mentioned, I think it is the um, the book which I keep on going back to at the moment, which is mm. this True and False by David Mamet. Yeah, well, what's so good about it? I just think it's very, it's a good, um place to, to just go back to a good resource to just go back to to just get a, a quick kind of like shock mm-hmm. uh reminder of you know you know what's what's useful and what's not mm-hmm. all right thank you look it was very lovely i, I hope we'll get a chance to do it one day again absolutely you know, it, it was great thank you very much you were very kind with your time and not at I all think... thank you for having me thank you for <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me <laughs> uh, and i'll see you next time Thank you.